Josh Smith with GottaBeMobile.com. I'm going to show you what's new in iOS 9 and walk you through some of these new features as well as explain when you can expect the iOS 9 release date. Apple announced iOS 9 this summer and we expect that you'll be able to download it on September 16th, probably around 10 a.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. There's a beta right now that lets you try out some of these new features on your device if you sign up for it. And on September 9th, you'll probably be able to download it and use it on your device for free without registering for the beta. Now, as far as devices that can run iOS 9, we have the 6 Plus here. It also works on the iPhone 6, all the way back to the iPhone 4S. It works on the iPad 2 and newer, iPod Touch 5th generation and newer and iPad mini and newer. Basically, if it can run iOS 8, it can run iOS 9. So you're gonna get a lot of these new features. Now, if you have an older device, you will see some cutoff where you're not gonna get exactly the same features that we're gonna show you here today. Siri has a new look in iOS 9, and Siri also respects if you have the mute switch, it will not give any kind of audible feedback. Now. One of the cool things you can do with Siri is you can control Apple Music and you can access some historical things. Play the top song from May 2000. So if you have a date that's in there, you'll be able to pull up a special song or just hear what was popular at a certain time. Now we can also use Siri to set reminders for specific things. Uh, in this case, I want to remember to watch this video about the iPhone success later. So I'm on this web page. Remind me to look at this tonight at 10 p.m. Okay, I'll remind you. And so Siri can pick up this and it knows that I'm talking about this specific thing. Now, if you have everything set up, you can even do this like remind me when I get to my car. If you're iPhone connects to CarPlay and knows that it's going to be there. There's a lot of cool new Siri features just in iOS 9. Now, search is also amped up on iOS 9, and Siri's kind of powering this. They talk about Siri being predictive. So we got some Siri suggestions for apps, people to talk to, and there's these new nearby options where I can tap on, like, restaurants. And it's going to pull up restaurants that are close to me here in town and I can check them out and see more information about them. Here's another new feature that you'll see in the corner here. It says back to search. So when you go from one app to another in iOS 9, you can tap that and go back to your previous app. It's really handy and a really nice way to jump around. Now you can also access a similar screen by pulling down. You're going to get app suggestions and you can search. And in iOS 9, you can actually search within apps. So if you have notes in Evernote or notes somewhere else or a specific news item, etc., you're going to be able to look in more than just your apps that are available here. But app developers do have to turn that on before we can show you how that works. We are going to see iOS 9 deliver your habits better. So when you go somewhere, say every morning you always listen to music, when you go running and you pair a specific headset to do that, it should be able to start picking up on that. That also carries over to the mail app where it's going to be able to remind you to include someone in an email. And you'll also see if you get a phone call from someone who's unknown, but their phone number shows up in your mail, it will tell you a best guess as to who that person is. Other cool new features are in Apple Notes. So with Notes, we have a lot of new options. If we go to a new note here, we're able to type if we want, but we can do much more. We can start a checklist. And if we want, we can also add a picture in here. So we'll take a photo and we'll use that and it's going to drop that photo right in here. We can also draw on our image. We can even add a ruler, 
move that around, switch colors. So there is a lot that you can do. You can check off your checklists. Notes is way more powerful. This all syncs between all of your iOS and OS X devices. You will need to upgrade your computer to OS X El Capitan later this year to have this functionality sync to those other devices. Passbook is no longer in iOS 9. Apple replaced it with Apple Wallet. So with Apple Wallet, you have your passes that were normally there. You can now do store loyalty cards, Discover is coming. There's a lot of new options here. When you're on your lock screen, you can actually double tap your home button. And if you have Apple Pay set up, it will pull up that information so you can choose the card you want and use that. We also have more security options in iOS 9. You'll see there are six circles up here. So instead of a four digit passcode, I can use a six digit passcode. There is now a new Apple News app. So you can go in, you can tell Apple what news you're interested in, and then you'll get updates about them. Now, when you go into these, you'll see that you get a nice looking layout with nice photos. You have video built in here. So it's kind of a, a nice look for news and you can get alerts emailed to you. You can see I have three new articles. You can choose favorites, explore, save. Really handy way to check in on your different news items that you want to follow. Now, if you're on AT&T, there's a cool new feature this year. Last year, we saw Apple add simultaneous voice and data for Verizon users. And we also got Wi-Fi calling for T-Mobile users. Now, if you're an AT&T user, we can go in and turn on Wi-Fi calling. And we can turn that on, we can hit enable, and we can go ahead and set up our Wi-Fi calling. And it'll give us a few warnings about that, but it's something that people will like, especially if you're in a poor coverage area. Another really handy settings option is if you drag down, you can actually search in settings for something that you have trouble finding and you can actually find that in here and tap on it and it'll take you right to that setting so that you're going to be able to change that without all of the hassle of looking around and trying to figure out where apple hid that one little thing in ios 9 battery life is way better on the iphone 6 just right out of the box when you install ios 9 you should get one hour of extra use that's without changing settings tweaking things etc you should just deliver that straight away to your phone because the operating system is more efficient. Now there's another new option called low power mode. When you turn this on, it's going to disable some things in the background, turn down some visual effects, but you don't have to manually go in and change those on your own. It's going to do it automatically. I'm going to hit continue. It's going to show me that I'm in low power mode because I have this yellow indicator up here. And you can toggle that on and off as you need. Apple claims that this will add three hours of battery life to the iPhone 6. So we expect to see similar gains across several other devices. Now, another really interesting upgrade in iOS 9 comes to the storage. So storage is a really a big pain point for a lot of users because they run out of space, especially on a 16 gigabyte iPhone. With iOS 9, once you get on iOS 9, you're going to be able to allow future updates to uninstall some of your apps and then reinstall them if you don't have enough space. The iOS 9 update is also smaller than iOS 8, so it should be easier to install that way. And we'll now allow app developers to choose to only give you the files you need to run it on this specific device. So for instance, one of these games up here probably has all the files needed to run it on an iPhone 6 Plus and on an iPad Air 2 with a bigger, higher resolution screen. So if we were to just get the files for this device, it should use up less space. That's something that developers will have to turn on, but it's something that we think will help users who opt for that 16 gigabyte iPhone. In Apple's health app, there are new settings to track reproductive health. You can track sexual activity, and if you go into health data, reproductive health, you can track a variety of things. This is new for iOS 9. You can track ovulation, menstruation, and other 
things that are important to track and we can also share those as well and view them on our dashboard along with the rest of our information so you have one spot to get access to all of your health data. Apple also finally adds a shortcut for iCloud Drive. This is basically a standalone app that allows you to access your iCloud Drive and open up things that you save to it without using a third-party app or trying to go into a specific app and then find it works really well. It's something that you'll definitely want to turn on. Now, another feature is the improved keyboard. So if we pull this up closer so you can see, one of the hassles is knowing if you have caps lock on or off. Well, now you don't have to worry. If caps lock is on, your letters are all capital. If it's off, they're lowercase. So now you will never have to wonder if your iPhone has caps lock on or caps lock off. Some of the iOS 9 features are specific to the iPad. This one is only available on the iPad Air 2, but others are available on multiple devices. If I swipe in from the side here, I can pull up other apps and I can put them in a split screen so that I have notes on one side and a Safari tab on the other. So I'm gonna be able to use two things at the same time. I can go in, I can change this. Right now, I only have a limited number of apps that I can open up over here, but you'll be able to use third-party apps once developers turn them on, and it should be a relatively easy thing to turn on. Now, if you're on a older device, you may only get access to the small quick view, which shows a few things over here on the side. Another iPad specific feature is in videos. So in videos, instead of doing split screen where I might not want the entire screen, half the screen taken up with this, I can push this small button over here. It's going to move it down into this very small version that I can drag around. I can actually change the size of that. So I can go do something else that I want on my iPad and I can still keep watching my video as if I was in that video. The iPad keyboard is now also better. So we'll pull this up here. You'll see we have this new bar here up at the top so I can access some of my note features and have new shortcuts over here. We have the same all caps kind of feature as on the iPhone as well. And if you connect a Bluetooth keyboard, you're going to still be able to use some of the on-screen guides like you see here. From a computing standpoint, I can now combine my iPad Air 2 with this split screen mode and an external keyboard and I'm able to pull all of this together so that I can take notes over here. On the left, I can browse something that I need to research over here on the right and I still have this small bar down here that offers access to the new features and I have the benefit of using a regular keyboard with the iPad. So I have more of a laptop replacement while using the iPad Air 2 with an external keyboard like this on iOS 9. So that's what you need to know about the new features in iOS 9 for iPhone and for iPad. You can check out a link in the description below for more on this at gotabemobile.com and learn how to use more of these features.